In this following tutorial we are going to place objects or models into the world. We're going to talk about how to manipulate them, how to move them around, rotate, scale, and position them in our terrain. To see what kind of models are available to you, there are two ways you can do so. If you go over to the Objects tab in the rollout bar, click on the brush, you'll have the Objects folder. You can open this up and then here you have various other folders that you can open and take a look at what kind of models that you can place in your world. So we can open up uh, structures and we can continue to open these up until we see various objects in here in each individual folder. If we scroll down you'll get a preview of what the object is. If you left click, hold and drag, you can pan around the object. If you right click, go forward and back, you can zoom in and zoom out. So you have a variety of objects you can take a look at including rocks, vegetation, vehicles, weapons, etc. Another way, another window that you can take a look at of all of the objects including the triangle count, the LOD, and more in depth about each object is if you go to view, open view pane, and open up the asset browser. In here you'll get a better view of what is available and all the details about each individual model. So under the asset browser here up on top, let's uh, you can change the thumb size to a uh, larger view so you can see it a little bit better. And uh, let's click off sounds and click off textures so all we see is models. Another thing is we want to hide LODs. When we are placing objects we just want to take a look at the object itself and not every single level of detail for that object. So let's click off of this. So click on hide LODs. And here we can also search for various objects or we can scroll through and see what's available and once we choose something that we like it will load here in the preview window and left click hold drag you can take a look at the object and you can also take a look at its wireframe and in here in the asset list you will get to see each individual object its file size where it's stored its reference so if we open this up a little larger you can take a look at the triangle count and all the important details for that object. Now to place objects into your world it's very simple. You can do so through the roll-up bar under brush and choose the object that you want. So let's say let's open up structures and let's open up buildings and let's open up forest cabin. Take a look at how this object looks and then we can left click drag right into the perspective viewport and place the object in the world. Right now we have the object in the world uh, but it's not set yet. We haven't placed it yet. We're just moving it around to find a better position of it. And currently we are not snapped to the terrain. Right now it's kind of placing it arbitrarily through the terrain. A lot of times when you place an object you want them to be snapped to terrain. So let's hit escape and up here in the toolbar you have two icons. You have follow terrain and you have follow terrain and snap to objects. So let's select follow terrain, go back to brush, forest cabin, drag it, and now we can snap to the terrain a little bit better. So once you're happy with where you want to position the object, left click again and it will position that object in the terrain. Now as we move closer we can see that it's going through the terrain and it's not using the normals of the terrain. In order for the object to kind of uh, follow the terrain up the slope we need to turn on align object to surface normals and you can find it here align object to the surface normal and if we click on this and then drag the object again it will snap and position object a lot better on your terrain. So now we have a little bit better position. Let me turn down the camera speed to let's say 0.1. So we can take a look at the object. To delete this object we simply have to select it and hit delete. We can also place these objects by using the asset browser. Let's click off the sounds, textures, hide the LODs and let's uh, search for rock. And let's position a set of rocks in here. So once we selected it, let's uh, minimize this browser a little bit. Simply use the thumbnail, left click, drag, right into the scene. And once you're happy with the placement, click and let's close the asset browser. Again we can 
align to the terrain and make sure that the align object to surface normals is turned on and then drag it so it's better positioned on top of the terrain. For each object that you place in the rollout bar after you select the object you will have certain properties, certain brush parameters for that object. You can turn off collision, you can set various other properties for that object, LOD ratio, view distance ratio, along with a few other properties that you may want to take a look at. If you want to replace this object, you don't have to delete it and replace it with a new object. You can simply select it, go down to brushes, and select a new object that you want to position and replace it with. It's a really quick and easy way to replace an already placed object in the scene without having to delete it. Now let's talk about how we can select and manipulate our objects. Up here in the toolbar you have a couple of icons. You have select, move, rotate and scale. The hotkeys are 1 to move, 2 to rotate and 3 to scale. So by going 1, 2 or 3 uh, the hotkeys you can manipulate the object rather quick without going up to the toolbar. So 1 you can select the object to move, 2 we can rotate it and you can scale the object. For every tool that you select here in the perspective toolbar you have XYZ coordinates. So if I go to scale we can scale this object by typing in the values. To set few parameters of how you want to rotate your object you have rotation grid settings. Here right now if I rotate the object it will rotate on 5 degree increments but I can rotate it along 90. So let's go to our rotate tool and it will rotate 90 degrees every time. And if I want more precise rotation I can switch it down to 30 or 5. Same thing we have a snap to grid setting here. We can set our grid setting to a higher value or lower value and when we move the object it will snap to the grid a lot more depending on the grid setting that we have. You can also constrain the movement to a specific axis. You have X, Y and Z or X and Y. So once you select this you can move the object around only along X, Y or only along Z. Y or X. Another couple of options you have is in the drop down menu you can move the object on local or world coordinates. So if we zoom in and we select the local uh, you can see that the cursor shifted a little bit so let me rotate the object a little bit to a different axis. And let's rotate it so we can see that the axes on the local coordinates are a little bit shifted. Now we can move this object on the world coordinates which will set the coordinates to the world instead of the object. So here you see we on local coordinates and if we switch it to world this will set it to world so we can move that object already rotated along the world coordinates and if we need to go back to local this will set the coordinates back to local and we can move the object on its axis as we rotated it before. So play around with all these settings and just kind of get a sense of what each one of them does and how it manipulates the object in the world. There is a few other ones we haven't covered. We can go to selected object. This will position the object inside your perspective viewport. You can align object to the grid. You can set object's height. If you want to duplicate the object, just simply select it and press Ctrl C. Once you have it duplicated, you have to position it and left click to finalize its placement. And at this point, once we duplicate it, we can replace the object. Going up to brush and choosing something different. But first, in order for us to do that, we need to select the object. Scroll down and then choose something else. Now let's choose a, a wooden dock. And let's position this in the water. Let's make sure we have surface normals set to on and let's choose 2A. Let's rotate it and let's position it more in the water. And here uh, I don't want the object to be this skewed in the water. Rotate it on X so it's more straight. And let's position it up. And we're jumping too much on the grid 
So let's minimize the grid a little bit. So it snaps in less increments. A few other functions that will help you greatly in positioning and placing your objects within the world are first let's go into the move tool, select the object first. If you hold down control and shift and left click anywhere in the scene, it will position that object where you left click. So for example, I selected this dock, control shift and let's click off somewhere right here. And it's going to position that object right where I clicked it. And as long as I hold on control shift with that object selected, I can position it anywhere I want. Another function that does the same thing, but it will align the object to the surface normal, which is very helpful placing the objects on the terrain. This will also do the same thing for placing the objects on top of another object and aligning them to those surface normals. By holding that control, shift, alt, and left click, it will position the object where you left click and align it to the surface normal. We can marquee select and select multiple objects by left click, drag over the objects that you want to select. While having multiple objects selected, we can control shift and place those objects anywhere in the scene. It's a really quick and easy way to position them around the world or move the objects. Once you begin to place various objects and your scene grows in how many models that you have, you can open up select objects window by going up to view, open view pane and choosing select objects. You can also do so in the toolbar, select objects. This will show you all the objects that are within your scene. You can double click, go in the properties. So as your scene grows, this is a quick and easy way to see what's, what objects you have within your scene. Another way is you can begin to put these objects on their own layer. So you can control the display of them and the selection of them a lot more easier. So if we switch over to the layers tab, right now we have set to main. This is the default layer. And if we click off, all the objects have been placed on the main layer. We can create a new one. And let's name this objects. And in order for us to position these models onto this layer, we need to switch over to the objects. And with the object selected, you have the layers menu right here. We can click on this and select objects. You can do so for the dock. And if we switch over back to the layers, we have positioned the objects on the object layer. So now, if we select this layer and we go in and place any other object right in here, this object will be positioned into the objects layer because we had it selected first. So this is a great way to begin organizing your scene once you begin placing various objects and populate your world. And the little asterisk means you just haven't saved those layers. So let's go ahead and file and save. 